Hello there. Before we get started on today's episode, I'd like to ask a short favor. If you're interested in either of the two books that I have written and I'm about to release, head on over to my website at theanxioustruth.com slash books. There you can learn about both books, one of which is free, and you can get on my mailing list to be notified when each book is released and how you can get it. I would really appreciate that. Okay, let's get rolling. Okay, we're live. Uh, hey guys, Drew here, thatanxietyguy.com, back again for another episode with Billy from Anxiety United in the UK. Hello again. How's it going, Bill? All good. Those of you who watched our last video, I'm going to say it right up front, will notice that I'm wearing the same shirt. <laughs> and Bill, <laughs> because we're doing these back to back, and my friend Billy was smart enough to get up and change. I pre that, is, that is ingenuity right there. Yes. If I had another shirt in the office, I might have done the same. So today, today we're going to do the next um, topic in, uh, we've been podcasting on an article that I wrote many years ago. It's sort of an anxiety 101 thing. We'll link it in the description wherever you're listening. Go read the article. Today we're going to talk about avoiding avoidance. We're going to talk about safety behaviors and avoidance behaviors and what, what they are and why they are bad. Where do we start? And where the big blur is between a good thing, coping skill, which is the last episode, go and watch it if you haven't watched it, um, and a bad thing, which is avoidance or safety behaviors. So well, this could be really long. Where should we start on this one? I'm just trying to put maybe a scenario together and just think of how many safety behaviors. I mentioned it in the last video, didn't I, with the hospital thing. So Yes. That for me, I suppose the most safety behaviors is when I have to leave the house. Mm -hmm. because that's one of my big things so like running through safety checks it's almost like being on a bloody airplane i imagine but i won't do that because i avoid it right but checking that i've got bottles of water checking that i've got my phone my wallet keys i mean these are normal things i guess but it's like the intense checking the mints knowing how far we've got to go where we've got to go Having food, I always take food with me now just in case my sugar levels drop. Yes. Because, you know, yeah. I don't have any problems with that and I never have, but it's just something for some reason I've just got into my head. And and these are these are all good. These are things that many of us did and I used to do too. Mm. Mm. We used to joke about the water and the mints all the time. Yeah. We have I don't know if you have them over there. We had these they used to be really popular. We have these mints called Altoids. Do you have Altoids over there? Not that I'm aware of. God, Altoids. They're like uber mint i mean like ultra right. mint so it was always altoids and cold water because one of those mints and some cold water was so minty that it would kind of these are the these oh. are the mints that i have ah, there you go okay so yeah, they're yeah. halls but these are supposed to be like cough sweets but that's what i have they're extra strong halls i've yeah. always got a pack of them with me and it's that it's that jarring flavor that hopefully kind of takes you out of the moment, I guess. Here's the airways. Who knows? Right? Who knows? But so what Billy's talking about are those would be safety behaviors. So let's talk yeah. about what a safety behavior is and why it's bad. A safety behavior is think of them as rituals. So like for me, it was bringing water and mints and my phone and doing all that stuff like that you do. Um, a safety behavior is a as a behavior that you have started to engage in in response to a period of hang, high anxiety or panic that you have somehow, and you don't do this consciously, right? You have linked in your brain, somehow mm -hmm. saves you mm -hmm. from your panic. Yeah, yeah. That the mints in the water, if you don't have the mints in the water, something bad is going to happen, right? Um, safety behaviors could be, are generally distractions, snap. Some people wear a rubber band around their wrist, right? And yeah. They snap it. Some yeah, people, yeah. Some people count, like I have to count backwards from 100 by sevens or something like that. Some people turn up the radio in the car or or... Another big safety behavior is other people mm -hmm. calling that one particular person, your safe wife, person. Your, yeah, right, a yeah. safe person or safe people. So safety behaviors essentially, while they might sound good, right, because they take you out of it, but they're really mm -hmm. trying to get you out mm -hmm. of your own brain, are actually bad because in the end, since things like panic disorder and anxiety disorders are cognitive malfunctions, we're we are mistakenly reinforcing the idea that there is something that we need to be saved from. Yeah. Yeah. So, so the best way I could describe that, and then maybe you can kind of add to this a little bit is if for some reason you left the house and did not have your bottle of water and your mints, That's what I was just going to say and, yeah. your, and your crisps and, and you felt terrible and you're, mm -hmm. and, and you had a panic attack, even without the water and the mints and the crisps and everything else, that panic attack would ultimately end this. They will be the same exact outcome, whether you have those devices with you or not. And is that something that's ever crossed your mind or? Yeah, a hundred percent. It doesn't matter whether you've got 
I think that the, the thing is, if you do go and you're 10 miles away from home and you realize that you've forgotten your bottle of water, yes. it can actually induce more anxiety. So it becomes a problem. You know, the preparation, you're getting all this stuff together. It's not going to save you anyway. But if you forget it, you're actually adding more fuel to a fire that wasn't even there before. You know, that's very true. That's mm. very, very true. That's a really good point. And, and I see people who, like coloring books, we were talking about the coloring books yeah, um, yeah. for a while. Like That has become a really hot thing, my coloring book. And, and I now know people who travel around with their coloring books and their colored pencils. Yeah. Uh, because when they start to feel anxiety, they have to color. And, mm-hmm. and we could talk one day about the mechanism of why that works. It's, it's, you're essentially getting your focus outward on, the, on what yeah, you're coloring yeah. on the paper, and you're getting out of your own head and that sort of stuff. Um, it makes sense. But now, they're, now the coloring book becomes a crutch. I can't leave the house without my coloring book. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, it, and it's almost saying I have to color to stop this yes. from happening when yes. the reality is we're trying to say just accept that this is happening. Lose yes. the fear. Don't try it. Like, it's as if I must color because I'm scared. Yes. You know? and, and I think the difference, the huge difference, and not to pick on coloring books, if you, if you have coloring books, sorry. I'm not picking on you, sorry, but, uh, or we'll talk about water, or, or a safe person. I think the safe person is the I was thinking, biggest there's safe a couple, behavior. Because we're, as we're talking of these, I'm thinking like pushing the shopping trolley around supermarkets, having to be the one that pushes, That's right. knowing where all the exits are as well, not going too far away from the exits and all those. Right. I'm going to stop you at multiple times and just throw out. Yeah, and, and you know, I think that's fine because I think pe- people like to know that, like, oh, I do that too. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, that's and, it. And it's true. But I think the key thing on a safety behavior, we're going to talk about avoidance too, but the key thing about a sa- – this is how you know it's a safety behavior and not a coping technique – is if you believe that if you don't have that, things will be mm-hmm. worse, it mm-hmm. has become a safety behavior. And, yeah. and you're actually making the problem worse because instead of learning to not be afraid of how you feel and not, not learning to not be afraid of panic or anxiety, all you're doing is learning to or mistakenly thinking that you are shielding yourself against this thing. And it, yeah. in the end, you don't need a shield. Like the, uh, the bottom line here is you have to learn that you do not need a shield. You don't need mm-hmm. protection mm-hmm. against anxiety or panic. So mints, water, your mom, dad, girlfriend, boyfriend, husband, dog, whoever makes you feel better. Yeah. Um, great to have those things, but you don't need a shield. So you don't mm-hmm. need mm-hmm. a safety device, and we have to learn that. And I had them too. I had mints and water. And I, I my, my doctor at one point gave me Xanax, you know, Benzo, whatever. Yeah. I don't know what it's called in the yeah, UK, yeah. but um, yeah, whatever you guys call it. Um, and he gave me, which I never used. I, I, I refused. I was like too stubborn to use it. But I carried that stupid bottle around in the console of my car. I mean, they yeah. were long expired. They baked in the summer. They froze in the winter. It was probably <laughs> worthless. But I would carry that bottle around for the longest time. And I remember years down the road, it was like such a big deal. And I remember thinking like, oh, I, I'm going to throw this away. And I, yeah, I yeah. threw it away. Mm. But um, so, yeah, you have to learn. We, we want, And we need to learn that you, there's no real danger. We don't need to be shielded. So we don't need these devices. That's it. That's the key point, isn't it? Yeah. So what about... We go back to... The yeah. no real danger. The no real danger, right. So we bring it back. So the difference between coping, we talked about coping skills in the last one, and safety behaviors. A coping skill is designed to strip away the shield. And I, I don't know, this is probably confusing in some instances. Like you, you, you're trying mm-hmm. to strip the shield away. So if you can learn to just relax your body and breathe and be thoughtless and calm and just mm-hmm. let that fear come at you as hard as it can, you're dropping all your shields. We're yeah. really trying to learn to drop all the shields and drop the defenses and just let it come so that mm-hmm. we learn mm-hmm. that, oh, that was it didn't kill me. It's okay. I don't, I don't yeah, need to yeah. be afraid of this. So we should also talk about avoidance, which is another big one. Avoidance. Avoidance. It's still, is, it's, it still haunts me, avoidance. I still do it. And it's just that it's get. I think that's the one thing. I've probably said that so many times already. Yeah. But avoidance is the thing that keeps me stuck. Because I, I don't know. I'm not so scared of the way that I feel anymore. Like I'm so used to having the, the the sensations or whatever it is. Right. But I still I still avoid, even though I still get the jelly legs and the weird dizzy sensations and the all of it. I still get it whether I'm sitting here or wherever. Right. But if somebody asks me to do something, there's just that that initial thought, that initial reaction is always of avoidance i'd rather not if you don't mind well i think 
nobody wants to feel badly. Not, none of us do. Yeah, yeah, we, we've discussed that, haven't we? It's it's like what I was saying in the last video about the hospital, just avoiding going into the hospital, right. which is hor- it's horrible. It makes I feel so guilty for not putting myself... Like, my dad's lying in the frigging hospital just having surgery, and I'm sitting in the car avoiding feeling a bit jellyfied yeah. for like half an hour, you know? It yeah. makes me feel... I'm really self-conscious of how bad that must seem to people that probably don't understand what it feels like. Yeah, they wouldn't necessarily understand, well, you're there. Why can't you just go in? I get, yeah, you know, yeah. I get that. I know we've, mm. all, we've all probably had to struggle with that a little bit here and there. but And you make a really good point. Avoidance really is what fuels the perpetuation of this problem. It really is. Right? But I think it's probably important to say, and, and after a while, some of the, we, we've been trying to really keep these topics separate, you know, like episode mm-hmm. by episode mm-hmm. here, but they do all meld together in the end. And read yeah. the article. When you, the end. Yes. Um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think avoidance is what fuels it. Safety behaviors make it worse in the end. They might get you through your day, but in the end, they're not really moving you forward. And so what it comes down to here is, I, I think when we address avoidance, the, the difference with avoidance is you're avoiding the things, those situations and those places, those people, whatever it is that are going to possibly trigger anxiety and panic for you and make you uncomfortable. Can I just say, like, maybe for me personally, it started avoiding, like, what seemed bigger. But yes. just gradually, I've avoided more and more. And the, the circle, my comfort zone has just shrunk because I've just avoided like now, I don't even go to my daughter's parents' evenings, sports days, even though that's standing on an open field. Right. You know, the avoidance has, has shrunk my world. That's that's the worst part. Then that's that's the textbook progression. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly. The textbook progression. Mm. And I think, mm. you know, probably just worth mentioning for two seconds here, too, that that's the hallmark of the difference between anxiety and anxiety disorder. When, when your yeah. lifestyle begins to be modified and shrink... Damn. That's that's bam. That that's where you've gone from. Because a lot of people have panic attacks, and they just yeah, oh, yeah. I had a panic attack, but they don't change their life mm-hmm. over it. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's the hallmark. Avoidance and and increased avoidance and that lifestyle modification is the hallmark of when it has become a disorder, a cognitively based yeah, disorder. Yeah. So, but I think the key here that I was going to talk about with avoidance is avoidance is a bad thing because it, it might make you feel better for the moment because you avoided that monster yeah, yeah. that you're afraid of, but you don't. Avoidance doesn't have to end instantly. So you don't have to go from being housebound to taking a trip around the world. Mm-hmm. That, that's not how you overcome avoidance. We overcome avoidance in little chunks. So like with your dad in the hospital, you know, okay, mm-hmm. getting there is, is one part of that. Sitting yeah, in the yeah. car park is one part of that. Getting out of the car would be the next part of that. Walking up to the reception desk would be the next part of that. Mm-hmm. And, and we, we overcome avoidance through exposure, and we'll talk about those things down the road, and, and incrementally rebuilding the behaviors that we, we've started to avoid mm, doing. Mm. So avoidance doesn't have to be overcome instantaneously in a day. And I think that people get intimidated by that. Yeah, yeah, I think so. So if you avoid the supermarket, you don't have to begin, you don't have to go to the supermarket tomorrow. You really don't, or today. Mm. You have to start working on getting toward the supermarket. And that's how we overcome avoidance. So I, I feel like this is one of the most confusing topics to people. And I don't know if I'm. I don't know if we're describing it that well, but I don't know. It's a tough it's just one. Avoid, it's avoiding every. It's avoiding social situations. It's avoiding picking up the telephone. It's avoiding. I don't know. What about like avoiding coping techniques? Yeah. Is that something like yes. people avoid exercise? They avoid eating healthily. That's true too. I have seen that as well. Because sometimes learning those coping techniques makes you feel worse initially a little bit. Yeah, like, yeah. Uh, exercise is one of the biggest ones. I actually did two mm. vid- two videos on that. Where yeah, yeah. You know, you people we're always told we should exercise; it'll make us feel better, but it might make us feel worse. So you have to mm. learn to overcome that. But I, so I think, th- if there's any takeaway from this particular episode, it would probably be to tell people to really sit down at a quiet moment and take inventory of like how are you actually dealing with the situation? What are yeah, you? Yeah. What are you not doing? That's avoidance. And what are you doing? And are you actually? Are you actually facing your fear or are you putting shields in front of it with what you do yeah, yeah. with your mates mm. or your phone or only being around your mom or your dad or whoever your safety safe person is? Because everybody's going to be so different with this topic. People very, are going to go away and sit and think. Very, they're they're going to 
find that they've got so many different safety yeah. behaviors or crutches I always like to refer to. Yeah, yeah, I used but that's to something for me like the and you you brought this up many years ago when I was going out filming myself like walking supermarkets or whatever and the camera becoming a safety behavior yes. because I was all right every time I held that camera in front of me and walked around whether it was because I was too I don't know I didn't want to feel silly in front of a camera like right. putting it on YouTube and looking like an idiot so something that camera became a safety behavior because I was all right every time I had it there and I, I remember you saying that many years ago and I actually because almost anything could be a safety behavior it yeah, doesn't even yeah. have to be directly related to a specific mm. sensation or anything and I had that same thing happen when we first met yeah. And, mm. you know, that, that group of us that were sharing videos, yes, all of a sudden I found, like, well, as long as I have the camera with me, I can get out and do yeah. this. Yeah. And I had to learn to, like, nope, this time you're going to go out and do it without filming it. Leave the camera mm. home. So uh, this is a tough one, like I said, for people. And I, I think probably the, the main thing is if you have to say, because I, I have encountered people who say, yeah, I have this problem, but, but I've learned to live my life. If, if any of that includes the phrase, as long as, like, I'm okay yeah, yeah, as yeah. long as yeah. I have my mm -hmm. ends, as long as I'm with my my, you know, my husband or my wife, you know, your goal is to try and get to the point where you never have to say as long as. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah. You shouldn't have to learn to live your life with something. Right. I, I can get to the supermarket it, as it long is. as. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, no, I can just get to the supermarket. So that's what we're going for. Mm, yeah. mm, so mm. I also find that the, the topic maybe ruffles feathers sometimes because I've, people sometimes. You're good at that. I, I am a feather ruffler. I wonder what the I don't know what the starting salary for that is though. I've never really <laughs> nailed it down. <laughs> I still haven't made no, any money feather ruffling. No, no. Let's talk for a minute about some of the programs at, out there. We'll be careful. We don't have to get into legal tangles with anybody. But okay, we were, okay. We were talking about that. There is a bunch of programs out there, right? That you can buy. People are peddling certain methods. Mm -hmm. Certain methods, yes. And I think. That's fine. I think any tool that anybody wants to try and avail themselves of is never bad. I'm trying to make judgment, but many of them are based on trying on on safety type behaviors. Yeah, yeah. I, I know a few in particular as well that have been really focused on distraction. Yes. Whether, whether that's a helpful thing. It's not really... I don't know, because we're going down the acceptance right. route, we right. don't want to distract ourselves from this fear we want to acknowledge the fear, don't we? That's the we're not trying to like it's have a drink of water mm -hmm. because it's gonna save you from whatever's happening. Yes. When it's not, then don't distract yourself from whatever's happening. You know, accept what's happening. That live live it. Those are really good points, and I think many of the programs out there, and I, I find that they're in two camps. Like a lot of the programs, and I think it's probably good to talk about this during this particular. They're all episode. expensive. They are all. Expensive. They are all expensive. I mean, you know, I'm a big Claire Weeks fan. I always have been. Mm. And, you know, you can buy her books for literally under five dollars on Amazon. Yeah, in, yeah. in the U.S. Mm. And, and so I find that most of the programs I've encountered are either distraction based or yeah. they are rehashes of the Claire Weeks stuff. So yep. you're either running from the fear or in, in forms of distraction or other little devices that sort of shield you from it and, and let you get through it or mm -hmm. you're mm -hmm. actually facing the fear. And, and that's the harder one. It's the harder. That's the path that we're talking about yeah. here. Yeah, but, yeah. But I think it's the more lasting one also. And then you also see certain uh, certain programs that say that it if it doesn't work for you, it's because you're not doing it right. That's right. Right. Another, it's not it's not very nice to hear that you're the problem you know yes yeah and, and we've seen that personally you're not doing it yeah right. yeah you know there's mm. nothing wrong with mm. this program don't say it's bad you just didn't do it right yeah yeah um so i, I think safety behaviors and avoidance you, you they're all around us and it's the sometimes the easier way to get through like I, I just i have to be able to pick up my kid from school so i'm going to find some way to do that and i think we both understand that we, we have yeah, to find ways definitely. to function at the same time definitely. But in the end, we should probably be trying to take steps to strip those away slowly so that in mm. the end, you can go pick up your kid from school without having to have any shield against it. A suitcase full of sweets, crisps, mints. I'm telling you, it can get a little extreme. I know for I know a that I, for me. Yeah, yeah. Back years ago when I was progressing nicely, I was gradually just phasing out different things. And then eventually, like, I'd, I'd be going out of the house and I'd realize that I'd forgotten my water. But right. it, wouldn't, it wouldn't spark anxiety it was just the realization wow i've not come out of the house i've not even thought before i've left that i needed water and mints and all that yeah you know? and that's a nice that's a nice feeling when you start doing that 
and you then you realize that you've done it but it doesn't bring oh god i nearly swore then yeah oh dear i forgot my water <laughs> I, I nearly swore we're gonna get censored we have to bleep you <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, that's pretty funny but i think that's true when when you begin to strip away your avoidance and strip away your mm. behaviors those suddenly the realization becomes a positive thing like yeah, yeah. look at me i'm out without my mints as yeah. opposed to yeah. oh no i never I forgot my mints mm. so yeah very cool so, I, I thought we would ramble more but i think we've done pretty well here we haven't rambled too much on this one yeah yeah i, I think if we just kept the video going and sat here all day we'd think of certain times that we've avoided or certain safety behaviors oh, you know so millions millions if people want to share their avoidance sure. their sure. safety behaviors do it in the comments because there's going to be somebody else that reads a comment and is able to relate no doubt about it right hey i do that or i didn't think anybody else did yeah that, whatever yeah it happens to be. it's always helpful for sure mm, mm. all right i think this was pretty good not too bad for winging it all right next time we're yeah gonna, that's good next time we're going to talk about symptoms I know it's a big topic, oh, Re man. reacting to symptoms and how that... Got my post-it notes and my pen. And I'm start... <laughs> Ready to go. <laughs> Carry so... them around with me. Anyway. All right. As usual, you can find Billy on YouTube, youtube.com slash anxiety united. That'll do. Yeah. YouTube.com slash that anxiety guy. Yes. Whatever. Look at the links wherever you happen to be. And, and let us hear it. You have comments? We'll, we'll answer them the best we can. We've been getting comments on these videos. We've been getting quite a few. Yeah, right, yeah. I, right. I think a lot of the ones on my channel were relating to symptoms, or yeah. quite a few of them were, and people asking, can we discuss why this happens or why? Yeah. So we'll see. We may go down that road at some point, sure. It might yes. take, it takes me a few days sometimes to realize I have comments, but I will get around to like at least approving them so people can talk. Anyway, all right. Thanks for tuning in. See, see, you, see you guys next time. Yes, indeed. All right. Later, folks. So. Hey, what's up, guys? Drew here. In the five years that I've done the podcast, I've never had a sponsor. But now it's time for me to put in a little plug for the day job, the business that I own. And that business is managed WordPress hosting. So if you have a website and it runs WordPress and you'd like WordPress hosting that makes WordPress faster, more secure, and way easier than you ever imagined it would be, then check out Helix. You can find us online at imhelix.com. That's I-A-M-H-E-L-I-X.com. We took a long time to build Helix. I'm super proud of it. It works spectacularly. We take really good care of our customers, and I promise we would take really good care of you too. So if you're in the market for WordPress hosting that will blow your mind, check out Helix. I would appreciate the consideration. I thank you for coming by and listening, and I'll see you the next time.